This week on the Rental Report Review. The acclaimed motion picture, Faces, 1968. That's really the only logline I can find. It will scare you to your very soul. Angel Heart, 1987. Love is desolate, romance is temporary, sex is forever. Romance, 1999. Fast cars, fast girls, fast living. Road Racers, 1994. The Adventures of a Blind, Gambling Masseur, and Master Swordsman. Zatoichi targets a Yakuza-controlled village because war with a neighboring town's smaller gang is brewing. The Tale of Zatoichi, 1962. What can I say about faces? It's good. Go see it. How are you going to sell us this time, Harry? Money! When I was young, I thought directing was about visuals, about making cool-looking images. At some point, I learned that those images have to mean something, have to say something. But since we're in this talky era, and our main subjects are human beings doing things and saying things, at some point, you also have to worry about actors. I don't know how to deal with them, and I admire anyone who can. And even more so, the actor who can actually write and direct, in awe, in terror. John Cassavetes. I've been circling the perimeter of his oeuvre for some time. Too much time. So much time, I'm barely catching the grip of him and want to circle back around. What he seems to be interested in here, aside from the complexities of real, modern relationships, their transgressions and repairs, aside from that, he's designed a series of covert vignettes where characters or actors traverse well-earned emotional switchbacks. Tricky climbs. But he gives his talent plenty of room to play all trusting that they'll get somewhere interesting, cathartic. I want to know how he works. I give Faces four stars. It's the most solid a four stars can be. Clearly ahead of everyone in immediacy. Like really, how did he prepare with actors? I know this was all scripted and he let the actors play their characters with some level of total autonomy, but it was written. But how many cameras? One with multiple takes? How many takes? Multiple cameras? Some scenes seem staged thusly, low on the deck, shooting up, zooming, especially into faces, helps camera operators avoid one another and ups the tension and anxiety for the viewer. Especially in those days when the seats were well below the screen. It'd be as if you're sitting down there in the corner looking up at this scene unfolding in front of you. Quite appropriate for the story. I don't know, I'm so curious. I think it's not five stars for me, because it veers still a little too actor workshoppy for me. Which is fine, you can be that. It's just not my main jam. The character narrative zigzags didn't get predictable. I didn't know what they would be, but you catch the rhythm of them and you, and you can feel them coming. Which sometimes was exhilarating, but ultimately a little too reliable. <laughs> But who the fuck am I? A few months back, YouTube started pushing Eyes Wide Shut and Ninth Gate analysis videos my way. Exorcist. For reasons. The possession of the human soul. Chinatown. I resisted, I almost always resist. The amount of not good film content out there, like this show, are legion. Anyway, they were pretty great. <laughs> a channel person named Siniji. I subbed to his channel and saw he did a ton of Angel Heart videos. I didn't watch them. It seemed like a movie worth not spoiling. Alan Parker, what, what did I, what do I know about Alan Parker? He could certainly deliver a look and a mood and I've really liked a lot of his movies, but did I love any? Do I love any? Pink Floyd's The Wall was also not my favorite Pink Floyd album. Anyway, I know a lot of people like this. I don't get it. The premise, the purpose, the perspective, the horror. I don't need to believe in the devil, I don't, for a devil movie to be scary, unnerving. But this ain't that. At least, not for me. What this really seems to want to be is some sort of moral tale, a, a fable, wrapped in a detective story. But I think it follows the wrong chunk of the narrative to make the caution it was trying to caution. I'm trying not to spoil it here. <laughs> I think The Ninth Gate is actually a great comparison. And one of those films I think is truly unnerving and chilling. And where nothing really breaches supernaturalism. Aside from a brief did that person float down the stairs moment. Most of the movie was humans fucking other humans. This, the supernaturalism rips it right from our real world, in my opinion. So I'm immediately not scared. Sure, maybe I wince at the gore, but it's fun. I don't know. I, I wish it used the whole religious, 
overtone as more than decoration around the detective story with no real destination. I'm told he went somewhere, but I, I guess I'll have to take the film report for that. I give Angel Heart three stars. Trying to pin it on me. It's well made. I just can't get my pulse up for this genre. It's just mostly uninteresting, like most Superman stories are uninteresting. The Exorcist, Nightmare on Elm Street, they're somehow plausible and address moral and primal quandaries. This? I don't think it pushes itself far enough. Rourke was solid, appropriately freaked. Nero was there. Charlotte Ramping was, and is always, a pleasant surprise. Lisa Bonet was also there. I would mention other films like this that I love, but even that would spoil it. This movie is grimy. I think they dusted the dust. Would love to talk with someone who loves this. T tell me what I'm getting wrong. This movie is fun, devious fun, but fun. Traumatic, but fun traumatic. I feel that's what I'm loving most about Brea, Brea, as I explore her catalog. I am never gonna learn how to speak French. She's engaged in play through the most sensitive and vulnerable and taboo corners of our society and the self. So far, mostly the feminine self. I think less effective films in this arena attempt tutelage, but Brea seems to be challenging herself to question, why is it that we're like this? Through sheer act of synchronicity, Sight and Sound posted an image from this along with this quote. Pornography doesn't exist. What exists is censorship, which defines pornography and separates it from the rest of film. Sex is a part of life, primal and primary, beyond our intellect, terrifying and transcendent. Plenty of room for someone like Briad to play. I give Romance 1999 four stars. For such a sparse film, there is a torrent of Japanese coursing throughout. Maybe even down to the story structure, seem to have a Kisho Tenketsu shape. Especially the latter third. Maybe a little too rushed? Feels a little like a waking sleeper trying to cram as much narrative into the end of a nightmare to make it, I don't know, self-virtuous? If you've dug this and dig Bria and haven't seen the Rocco Sofredi documentary, Rocco, I highly recommend it. Talk about a complicated figure with a huge dong. These kids ain't the same anymore. And you know what's behind it all? Rock and roll. That music is turning the kids into a bunch of sex-hungry, beer-drinking, road-racing werewolves. An outlaw team. Okay, so right off the bat, this is a good movie. Gets the genre right, great performances, generally very well written. Robert Rodriguez. I idolized him for a moment in my late adolescence, and then he started making things that weren't for me, and then that really weren't for me, and then committed the ultimate sin of shooting Sin City on digital. I've never claimed to be smart, but I have been thinking for a while, I need to go back and see what's really what. And when this was suggested to me by a viewer of the Rental Report Review, I was both, well, I was shocked that I had anybody that watched the show to recommend anything to me, and also reluctant. But like I said, this was a good movie, a nearly really great movie. What is going on here? Hello, this is Robert Rodriguez, and welcome to The Making of a Degenerate Hot Rod Flip. I don't usually watch special features for this. I, I try to stay with the movie and the movie only and what I already think I know. But when I heard that Rodriguez allegedly, and I believe him, wrote this in like 10 days and shot it in 12, one of which was the fucking Northridge earthquake, I was, again, in deep admiration of him. I mean, I hope he was a good guy to the cast and crew and studio. I hope they were gracious to him. But that is an astonishing feat. And he's delivering way more than anyone could have expected. And maybe even appreciated. I give Road Racers four stars. I mean, really, really, coming out blind, it's like a 3.5. But for what this actually is, four stars. So he did El Mariachi on his own for pennies, gets his ticket to Hollywood, gets Desperado greenlit, and makes this just before 
as they're prepping when another director drops out at the last minute. It almost totally makes me forget about some of the disjointure. It really only sags in the last third, clearly vamping to meet some sort of network runtime. I think there's a reason some of these, some of the best B pictures were barely over 70 minutes. The broad strokes you afford for strong archetypes seem to exist best in an economic framework. And there's a couple narrative leaps that seem to mostly be the result of, again, a network clock. Selma Hayek, and, and I mean all the cast, but David Arquette had me smitten. But Jesus, I've never seen so much fucking cigarette smoking. In a small town, heading for a big show. Road races. It was great to see meaningful, bold framing and real dynamic motion photography. I think this is officially the third time I've attempted to start the Zatoichi series. I'm not going to do one every episode for 25 episodes, but I will be peppering throughout. So this, Zatoichi 1, the tale of Zatoichi, a blind swordsman, not just a swordsman, but THE swordsman. He's technically not a samurai, he's Yakuza. Criminal, peripheral, outcast, degenerate. Technically, masquerading is a bit of a masseuse, but known to be unfathomably proficient with this Shirasaya. But what really makes him great, admirable to all, is that he's a clever hero. I remember a classics professor in college saying that the Greeks, the ancient world, loved heroes like Theseus, like Perseus, and even like Sisyphus, was because they were, above all, clever. They could sniff out a plot and outplot the plot, covertly, overtly, it didn't matter. They would intellectually checkmate, at least before physically checkmating. Their fate often kept them in line. And Zatoichi is one of those characters. And it's not just about his blindness. That's not the only trick he has, but he does use it quite cunningly. He also uses it to provide a courteous escape to his adversaries, sometimes for grace, sometimes for traps. At least in this first installment, it's inventive and unpredictable and very satisfying. I see no reason not to give the tale of Zatuichi five stars. <laughs> I know a bit more about director Kenji Misumi, having seen some stellar work from him in the later Lone Wolf and Cub series. He has masterful balance in his directing. Composition, tuning of actors, emphasis, movement, tension. It's a platonic ideal of its genre without a doubt due to Misumi. Masayobanri as Otane. What a babe. The sword fights in this are first rate, and the score sizzle so much in the last third. This week, my weekly pick of the week is... This one seems almost entirely too easy. It's the man in the outer world on his way to the underworld. Zatoichi. The tale of Zatoichi. This week's bonus feature is... Part of me wants to say romance. I would be a poser if I said faces. Road racers. It's Rodriguez. It's the Rodriguez I want to remember, the Rodriguez I hope to find again. Thank you so much for watching. You can follow me on Instagram and X to see what movies I'm renting next. And pretty much everything is on my letterbox. Uh, I am going to go watch some more movies. I hope you do too. Video.